witness. Did he hear the great testimonies again here this morning? Somebody was here last Sunday, weeping in church because he was about to lose a relationship, an account in the place he works. But he had here that God will restore to you even the thing you're about to lose. And that was what happened exactly. Today, that testimony went to all that account was restored, that relationship was restored. God will give you your own testimony today. Amen. Testimonies of healings and deliverances, open doors. Somebody got a job. <laughs> was constantly honoring God's servant. Got a job that is double what he was earning before. As a matter of fact, his boss that was troubling him is almost his salary now. A job that for people with 10 years experience, somebody with 3 years experience got it by favor. God of heaven will place you in Jesus' glorious name. Many more testimonies of God great acts in our midst. To him alone be all the glory. Miracle alert. <laughs> the man received, the wife received. Miracle alert. God will give you your own. Now, for all these and many more, the ones that are not shared are actually more than the ones that are shared. Let's appreciate this God. Let's glorify this God. Let's exalt him. Let's thank him. Jesus will bless your name. Jesus will exalt you. Jesus will enthrone you. Are you sure you are thanking him? Lift your hand. Lift your voice. Glorify the name of the Lord. He alone is worthy. He has done all things well. He's the reason why you are still standing strong today. It's because of his message that we are not consumed. Father, we thank you for keeping us alive. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your great acts in our midst. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we enthrone you. Lord, we worship you. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you because you've done all things well. Thank you because you are strength, our song, our shield, our buckler, our refuge of our God in whom we trust. Thank you for keeping us from the beginning of the year till now. You are faithful. You are faithful. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we exalt you. Lord, we magnify you. Take all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Receive all the praise. Receive all the glory. To you be all the glory in Jesus' excellent name. And we shall say that you are good. And all the miracles you thought have brought the joy. Now we are changed. And all the hope we have, we bless in you right now.
Galaba, Embrenia Gazeme, Kota Palagania Galeba, Embreneme, Ruta Paragaya, Jesus, we declare, we declare, we love, 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 we have seen your message. We have seen your kindness. We have seen your favor. We have seen your peace. We have seen your protection. We have seen your help. You have laid help for your Almighty. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To you be all the glory. Jesus again. Settle every unsettled issue in the life of your people today. Answer questions in our heart. Let your prayers not return as shame. Let not your prayer return as shame. Give us help, O oh Lord. For then is a helper man. So you be all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' glorious name we are worship. Every unsettled issue of your life will be settled today. The God of heaven that I brought you here today will settle you. You shall not be put to shame. In Jesus' excellent name. Hallelujah. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. So shall it be. Please put your wonderful hands together for Jesus. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is a special Thanksgiving and dedication Sunday. It also doubles as our covenant day of settlement. Remember the word of God towards this month has been, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Today, by the special grace of God, we'll be concluding the serial teaching we started since the beginning of the month, understanding how God leads. Understanding how God leads. So we'll be looking at part 5A in this first service, and we go that way to the third service. Now, remember, this is a covenant day of settlement, and God of heaven will settle every unsettled issue of your life. Kindly come with me to Psalm 119. Verse 89. Psalm 119, verse 89. Open with me or you read through the screen. One, two, go. Let's read. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. <laughs> Whatever is settled in heaven can settle the issues of men in the world. Precious people of God, the settled word of God settles every unsettled issue of people in the world. And today, by that settled word, your situation will be settled. A man was called Joseph. It's a 105, 19 to 22. He was put in prison. He was heard and heard by fetters. He was led in iron. The Bible said in verse 19, until his word came. But when his word came, God settled him. God, the king sent and lose him. The ruler of the people made him to go free. Somebody is going free from every form of bondage today. He made him lord of his house. He made him a ruler of substance. A slave becoming a ruler of substance. Somebody will live here today ruler of substance. Yeah. He made him a teacher of his senators. You know what that means? They had to change the constitution of Egypt. <laughs> so that an ex-convict can rule them. So that a slave can rule them. So that a small boy can rule them. Now rules will be changed to settle you. The settled word of God settles the issues of men on the earth. In Luke chapter 5, 2 to 7, because somebody will say uh, Joseph was in the Old Testament. Now Jesus came for a crusade. 
And then here was Peter and his colleagues washing their nets. Luke chapter 5, verse 2. In other words, case closed. I don't know the case you have closed. Reopening with God today. Because in the hand of God, there is no closed case. That case is not closed. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That testimony of that brother, he was crying here last Sunday. Crying. In other words, it's like all hope is lost. According to that testimony that was read to us today. A major account he was handling. A major relationship was about to crash. But God of heaven reversed the irreversible. Because he had in this place that God will restore even what you're about to lose. And today is a testimony. Peter toyed all the night and caught nothing. Maybe that is your situation. From January to now, it's like toiling without result, moving around the circle. You try your best, but you seem your best is not enough. God is going to restore and set to you. Amen. You know what happened? Jesus came in verse 4. Peter, lower your net. He was washing nets. He said, lower your nets into the deep for a drought. Peter said, Jesus, I'm older than you. You can see that. I'm married. You are not married. I've been training children with this business. <laughs> we don't catch fish in the day. We catch in the night, as far as my experience can tell me. <laughs> so this one, we toyed all the night. You know, they go in the day. It's not possible. But he said, nevertheless, say with me, nevertheless. May somebody have a change of mind today. Nevertheless, at thy word, the word that is settled in heaven, that settled the settled issue of man, at thy word, I will lower the net. And then he did lower one net. Not nets they told him to lower. Just one. And then all the fishes decided to come for census. Enumeration. Knee registration. <laughs> all of them gathered. Peter, where are the nets? They told you to bring nets. All of, some of them got angry with Peter because there was no place to enter. That's why the one night he put started breaking. <laughs> the boat sank. It was a boat sinking breakthrough. But he came at the instance of the word. Now hear me and hear me well. At the instance of the word of God coming your way today, that unsettled issue will be settled. Yeah. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Settled in heaven. Last year, Just like August like this was my birthday. And I, we prayed for singles here. And one of us was here. Who for 15 years had been trusting God to marry. But God broke that jeans. That testimony was shut on this altar. Not only did she marry. Just like one of the testimonies that we read today. A day to her, her marriage, her miracle job too came. To show you that God has God is involved in this thing. Hallelujah. That testimony was shared here. One of us had a testimony of another brother who came here to meet me. And then within before from here to his office, it was on a Monday. Between here and his office, the job he's been looking for that means that the They've not released the contract to him. He got it. And that testimony was shared. That's why you must share your testimonies. Because somebody else may need it to get his own. And that brother was in church that day. The guy was sharing the testimony. He said, ah, my wife, this is how my case is now. I've applied for this job since. And they've not called me. And he came around too. Within two weeks, he got his job. His own was now so unique that before he could resume, they promoted him. That's the first time since I was born for me to hear that kind of a thing. I don't know if you have experienced it before. I've never. That somebody has not even resumed work. They promoted him. Some people are there 10 years, no promotion. Somebody has not resumed. They say you are promoted to the next rank. Resume with the next rank.
The God of heaven that be settling others will settle you. You know, you may be hearing testimony of others. You think, what is happening? Why is my own? Did you hear the testimony of the woman that shared today that she received miracle alert? Is there any time people share testimony of miracle alert? She will clap with all her heart for them. And he's like, where is my own? But now, somebody she has not talked to in 20 years remembered her all the way from America. Father, remember me for good. And then, serious alert. And the husband said, I need that money. She to say, ah, this is the way. Go and tell God in covenant hour of prayer. And before you know it, send us your account number. Don't you like receiving that kind of test? If you don't like it, send it to me. You'll be receiving that kind of test from now. Yeah. Send us your account details. And it will not be from fake people. Uh, it will be like that person. Within one hour or two hours, <clears throat> it will land. In Jesus' glorious name. It's the only those who are ready to send it will ask you. Not the one that will say in 20 years. <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody is being settled. Amen. You'll be settled maritally. Amen. You'll be settled financially. Amen. You'll be settled in your business. Amen. You'll be settled in your career. Amen. You'll be settled in every area of your life. Amen. In your academies, you'll be settled. Amen. In your health, you'll be settled. Amen. You know what a settlement? God gives you rest. That settlement is what you get after you have suffered. God giving you rest. God will give you rest. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, one major way to enjoy God's settlement is following the leading of God. Because when God is leading you, he will lead you to a place of settlement. Are you getting me now? The shepherd will always take the sheep to a quiet, restful place. A green pasture. A place of settlement. But you see, you can't follow the shepherd until you understand how he lives. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but there's no settlement there. It's destruction. Destruction. It's not every open door that's God's door. You must know and understand how he lives so that you will not be a victim of evil. Because when God leads you, he leads you to settlement. He leads you to profiting. I am the Lord thy God that teaches you to profit, that leadeth you in the way that thou shouldest go. There is a way to go, there is a way not to go. When you are following the leading of the shepherd, you cannot miss road in the journey of life. And quickly, as we try to understand how he God leads, it's important that we answer this question. How do we assess divine guidance? I encourage you to refer back to all the teachings of the month because that's what will make for a complete package. The second Sunday, I know I told her that, success, uh, that guidance is a universal crave. Everybody is craving for guidance, including you. Everybody, including the unbelievers. That's why you see people going to read my handle, what is my future saying? <laughs> they are looking for guidance. They are looking for direction. Some people carry horoscope. What did the star say about today? Direction is a universe. Everybody wants direction. And there is no day, sir, you grow too old or you'll be blessed so much that you don't need direction. As a matter of fact, the more you climb, the more you need more precision in direction. Are you getting what I'm talking about? If something falls from here and I may not make noise, but if you fall from this roof, you <laughs> to make noise. So you need more precision as you climb the ladder of life. You will not be a victim of evil. So how do we assess divine guidance? Number one is by the witness of the Spirit. By the witness of the Spirit. By the witness of the Spirit. Romans 8. 14 to 16. For as many as, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Please take note of the Spirit there, S, capital, which means the Holy Spirit of God. For we have not received the Spirit, small letter. I told us when you see small letter, it can mean any spirit, any other elemental spirit, or your human spirit, or evil spirit. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit, capital letter, of adoption, 
whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now look at 16. The Spirit itself, capital letter, the Holy Spirit, beareth witness with small spirit, our human spirit, that we are the children of God. If I ask you, how do you know you are born again? Some people say, I've left the thing I used to do before. That's not true. There are people, even, even people who don't go to church, who have left what they used to do before. That's not what makes you born again. It is the witness of the Spirit that I'm a child of God. If you don't have that witness, you are not. The witness of the Spirit. I will not want to go back to some of the things I've already taught us before. But every one of us, we experience this witness. It's just that we are not paying attention. There's no time you want to do bad things, you don't know you are doing bad things. There's no time you want to do good things, you don't know you are doing good things. There's no time you want to take wrong step that it doesn't witness to you, this is wrong. It's just that you are not careful enough to listen. Sometimes you go somewhere, you forgot something, the Holy Ghost will witness to you, you have forgotten something. Have you experienced it before? You do like this. I beg. Quit counting. You just rush out. And you just get to your house and discover that you have forgotten your key. Has it ever happened to you before? Hmm? And you now rush back. I but something told me, oh. That's a witness. Some call it a hunch. Some call it is 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 an inner perception. You can perceive something. By the Spirit of God. Now look at Acts 16, 6 to 7. Now, when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, the Holy Ghost forbade them. After they were come to Mysia, they are said to go into Bithia, but the Spirit suffered them not. It was by the witness. The Spirit suffered them not. Some years ago, I was in Sabo in Kaduna, and we are constructing the auditorium. Now, we have set in our management meeting for the project, we have agreed on what to do, and we have approved some money to be spent the following day. Checks have been written. It's just like this church. You see this where this choir is sitting and the pastors. We agreed that we are going to elevate this place and this place so that the altar will not be too high. We have agreed. Architects, engineers, all the team said that's what we're going to do. And we went back to home. And in the night, the Holy Ghost witnessed to me. And I said, look at it. Just like if you go out here, there's a, there is a passage there, a corridor. This one is even wider. That one is small like this. He said, if we elevate this place, we're going to need step at the back. Are you getting me now? And if we need step there, there is no space to have step. It wasn't a no in so it just witnessed to me. Ah, immediately I started calling all the engineers, the architect. They, don't spend that money. Don't spend the money. We are not going to do that again. And when we gathered in the morning to see it, everybody saw it. Ah. Even the architect said, Pastor, you have a better mind than me. It wasn't Pastor. It was the Holy Ghost that witnessed to me. And that way, we saved money, we saved embarrassment that could, it could have caused us. After elevating it, there would be no place to put step. The Holy Ghost. He can witness to you who to marry, who not to marry. He can witness to you the business to do, the investment to do, and the one not to do. There is no one here he has not been witnessing to. But I want you to please pay more attention. Pay more attention. Because this is one of the cheapest ways the Holy Ghost leads us and guides us. Number two, we want to see in this service is through praise and worship. And that we're going to do today. Through what? Praise and worship. Isaiah 30, 29 to 30. You shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity came and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard. 
and shall shoot the lightning down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and headstones. Whenever you are, you create an atmosphere of praise and worship, God appears. Remember Psalm 22, verse 3, God inhabits the praises of Israel. Amplified version is inhabits the place where the praises of Israel are offered. So God appears. And in that environment, he can speak to you. He can direct you. He can guide you. Personally, if I can get to the atmosphere of worship and praise, I hear him. He can witness to you easily. He can speak to you easily. You can hear him. So always create an environment of praise and worship. It is vital in the school of divine direction. Remember, if you don't understand, better, you cannot praise God without joy. You cannot praise God. Let him that is merry sing. When you are joyful, you will become praiseful. When you are praiseful, you become godful. And when you are godful, you can become wonderful because all the, he will be giving you direction on what to do. You will not miss road. So please, Always create an environment of praise. Have a lifestyle of praise and worship. You'll be able to hear him. You'll be able to direct you. You'll be able to speak to you. If you are always in bitterness, unforgiveness, creating some kind of environment of evil, God won't be there. He won't speak to you. Where will he? You'll be, your life will be choked. You can't pick. Some of us know that when the weather is not too good, even you can't pick some signals, three of us. So don't allow anything to choke you. Create an environment of praise and worship. God works better and speaks to us better in such an environment. So what are the biblical proofs of being led by God? How do I know or how do I prove that this step I'm taking, God is involved? Number one is supernatural drive. Say with me, supernatural drive. Anytime God is leading you, there will be a supernatural drive. There will be the, a surge of power and energy. Jeremiah 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. The world was shut up in my heart with a burning fire. That's a burning fire. Now, God cannot be leading you, and then you'll be dragging. Listen. Divine direction drives you. Anything he tells you to do, anything he shows you will drive you. It will impart some kind of strength, energy to drive you. So what's that? Look at Galatians 1, 15 to 17. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the hidden, immediately I confessed not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. That vision drove me. Paul to go and know more of Jesus, to go and search more for him. That's why he ended up in Philippians 121. He said, For me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. Any, you know, did you know Paul was going about preaching everywhere? The same one that persecuted the Christians, he was preaching it without getting weary. I caused every root of weariness in the name of Jesus. Every root of discouragement, depression, I curse it today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Receive supernatural drive in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two is divine protection. Divine protection. If God is leading you, he also will be protecting you at the same time. God cannot be leading you and then leave you at the mercy of the devil. If he's leading you, he will protect you. He will keep you. The word preserve 
is even stronger than protection. Preservation, protection is part of preservation. And when they were going out of Egypt, Exodus 23, verse 20, look at what he said. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. To keep means to protect, to preserve. To preserve means to remove you from any evil occurrence and to avert the evil occurrence. Aversion of evil occurrence and then removal from evil occurrence or exemption from evil occurrence is preservation. To keep thee in the way, to bring you to the place which I have prepared. If God is the one leading you, he will bring you there. That's why when he told Moses, look, I'm going to raise another generation from you. I will destroy these people because they are stiff-necked people. It was God that called them stiff-necked first. When Moses used it, God punished him for it. <laughs> Moses told God, there is something you don't know. Let me teach you. If you say you destroy these people in the wilderness, they will say you are a God. You don't have power. You just brought them to destroy them in the wilderness. You better take them to where you are fed. So God had no option than to take them to the promised land. Are you following me now? If God is the one leading you, sir, you are automatically protected. You are automatically protected. Why? His presence shields you from evil. His presence shields you from evil. When they went out of a strange, went out of Egypt, a land of a strange language, Judah was a sanctuary. Israel was his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. The mountains came like ram. The little hills like lamb. The Jordan was driven back. He said, what a lady, oh Jordan, that thou fled it. And you mountain, you scale like ram, and, you, uh, uh, and little hills like ram. He said, tremble thou at the presence of God, at the presence of the God of Jacob. So it was the presence of God with them that shielded them from all the wild animals in the wilderness. You think there's no wild animals there? It was the presence of God that protected them. So when he's leading you, now I think about it. You, you, you as a father or a mother, you are leading your child to school. If there's any danger, won't you protect the child? Eh? Will you just leave the child to the danger? No. The same way, when God is leading you, he automatically protects you. He automatically protects you. He automatically protects you. He led them in that, out of Egypt. In that Psalm 114, 1 to 7. His presence was what the sea saw and said, I can't tamper with these people. His presence was what the people, the, 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 the mountain saw. He said, let's give chance. <laughs> when God is the one, evil will not come. Evil, evil. In the road God is leading you, you will not see evil. Because he's too big to defend himself. Hallelujah. So me are here. Anyway, today is our covenant of settlement. God will settle you. Every marital issue is being settled right now. Every health issue is being settled right now. Every academic issue is being settled right now. Every financial issue is being settled right now. Every form of satanic siege in your family, I command you to be ended in the name of Jesus. Please understand that by redemption, we are not permitted to suffer beyond a while or a moment. You are not permitted to suffer beyond a while or a moment. First Peter 5.10, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Four things happen after you have suffered a while. The first one is perfection. The second one is stability. The third one is strengthening. And then finally, settlement. And I want to announce to you, in that issue, you have suffered a while. Eh? You have suffered a while. The Bible told us what a while means. A while means an hour, one hour. Like in Luke, in Matthew chapter 8, 8 to 13. Remember, that's the children when he looked for the healing of the servant. The same, verse 13 specifically, the same, same hour that Jesus spoke, the child was healed. A servant of his was hid immediately. The same, same hour. So a, a while or a moment can be interpreted as one hour. It can be overnight. Psalm 30. 
verse 5. For his anger endure for a moment. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Joy cometh in the morning. Announce to somebody here today, your morning has come. Amen. Yesterday has carried away that satanic siege in Jesus' name. Amen. You will not see it again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. A moment or a while can also be three days. John 2, 19 to 22, Jesus answered and said unto them, Des Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was the temple in building, and we die it up in three days, but he spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Whatever had passed three days must be settled today. Amen. That situation in your home, husband not talking to wife, wife not talking to husband. Eh? Maybe you are giving the silence attitude. Don't do it though. Hmm? If that is what you've been doing today, you do in this church, just change. One day, I was preaching in church, and they have to call me out that the deacon and deaconess were fighting inside church. Oh. Husband and wife, they fought at home, they brought it to church. At the end of the service, they had to call me out to talk to them. I talked to them, oh. but thank God for a good, a good deacon. He told me, Pastor, this people case is not what you can settle like this. And we had a marriage. Uh, teaching in the evening, we had a marriage something. After I finished teaching, I saw these two people holding hand to go. <laughs> I said, thank God for the advice of that deacon that told me that you can't settle their case like this. After we finished in that evening program, they were holding hand like this, husband and wife, no more fighting. So in case you've been giving yourself silence attitude, it's not good. I had a story, a man was uh, keeping uh, silent with the wife. You know that kind of after quarreling, beating, and all that. And I, I know they greet. Husband and wife, no greeting. The same household. Pastor coming, they will mend up and do as if to say that together. After pastor go ahead, as I was saying before. <laughs> <laughs> so they were keeping themselves quiet, you know. And the man needed to travel. He needed to travel. And uh, he told the wife, he, he didn't tell her, he just wrote a note to the wife. So wake me up. I don't want to miss my flight. So when it was time, the wife too wrote a note. Wake up. <laughs> wake up. It's time to start preparing so that you won't miss your flight. And the man did it. <laughs> Since he can't read while he's still sleeping. He woke up and discovered that uh, he has missed his flight. He was currently with the inner spook. <laughs> Why didn't you wake up? I wrote it for you. So don't keep silent attitude with your husband or your wife. The truth is that every such issue, I command it right now, settled. Yeah. Every issue in your marriage, issue of fruitfulness, settled right now. Somebody get a miracle conception from now. Yeah. Every issue in your family, extended family, issue with your children, with your spouse, I command it to be settled in the name of Jesus. Amen. Issue of relationships. I command it restored and, and, and settled in the name of Jesus. Amen. God of heaven will settle you. Now hear me. Every unwanted situation of long continuance is a cause. But remember that Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord. Deuteronomy 8 verse 59 we see that everything of long continuance, some sicknesses of long continuance is a cause. But thank God, Jesus Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the Lord because he's reading, because he's the man that hung on the tree so that we can receive the blessing of Abraham and the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. So to enter the realm of settlement, what must I do? Number one is that you must be born again and continue to hunger and thirst after righteousness. You must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Very I said unto you, Except ye be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You can't see it, not talk of entering, if you are not born again. 
Remember, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Don't miss God with sin. That is why you are not settled. You are going from pillar to post, running heta sketa every year. You end up in yawning. No. Separate yourself. Separate yourself from sin. Separate yourself from immorality. Separate yourself. From Beth Niger. Separate yourself from that unclean thing. You know it. You know the one you are doing. Separate yourself from that pornography, from that masturbation. Separate yourself from that lesbianism, from that homosexuality. Separate yourself. Separate yourself. I used to tell people, even goods, 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 he goods that is white knows that he will not sleep with another he goods. Human being. You mean say good better pass you? Don't miss God with sin. You carry Bible and put here and carry Gouda. With one hand, Gouda, Bible here. It doesn't work. So miss God, carry charm, tie here, carry anointing oil for hand. They even the anoint the charm, make it work. <laughs> you are wasting your time. It's a luta continua. If you are for God, be for God. He said, return to me and I will return to you. Return. You have gone far. That's why you are not settled. You have gone far from him. As I'm talking now, you know what I'm talking about. Be sincere. God likes sincere people. Sincere people. If you are not sincere, God can't deal with you. Sincere people. Ask Jacob when you see him. When the father asked Jacob, what is your name? He said, I'm Esau. Yes. He deceived the father, collected the blessing, but he knew he suffered. He was not settled. In the house of Laban, he suffered. They changed his wages ten times. He wanted to marry. After laboring seven years to marry his heart drop, they gave him another. I don't know why he should go and marry in the night. Don't marry in the night. Though. Open your eye. Shine your eye when you are married. They gave him another woman. He has to work another... Seven years. Fourteen years to get a, a, a lady. But it's what was following him that was causing the problem. But remember, in Genesis 32, when the angel appeared to him, the day he was, he was left alone, he, he tried to be, he checked his life. I can't continue like this. That's what somebody should be thinking now. I can't continue this thing like this. Why will my life be like this? No! You must be settled, sir. You must be settled, man. Check your life. He came to himself. Why am I like this? Esau, when he was going home, remember, and Esau was waiting to kill him. When the agent asked him, what is your name? Why didn't he tell him Esau? He said, my name is Jacob. He was sincere the first time. Jacob means supplanter. I've been a supplanter. I've been a cheat. Angel said, your problem started from your naming ceremony. I'm going to change. It's going to be changed. You need a new name. If you can't continue with this name, that's what is happening. Somebody God will settle you with a new name. That name they used to call you, they will not call you that name again. Because God will settle that situation. That is making them call you that name. In Jesus' glorious name. He said Elizabeth that was called barren. God never called her barren. Life called her barren. Every name life has given you that you ought not to bear. I command you to be changed now. <laughs> I say your name shall not be called Israel. Because I say, Prince, you are prevailed with God. And with man. Jacob said, I've seen God face to face, and my life is changed. My life is settled. Find out in chapter 33 when he met Esau. Esau that could have killed him, kissed him. Esau that could have. Keep him, embrace him. Because of change of name, settlement, 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 settlement. God will settle you. Amen. But be sincere. Be sincere with God. Be sincere. Don't wear a camouflage. Don't wear a mask before God. Ha! You can pretend before men, but don't pretend before God. Be yourself. Let him know how it is with you. You have been struggling with us. He can help you. 
New Year resolution didn't help you, but Jesus can help you. Be sincere. Number two, you must be committed to building your faith against all satanic forces. You must be committed to building your faith against all satanic forces of disruption. And faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Ephesians 6, 16. Taking the shield of faith, we are which you shall be able to quench all the fiery dust of the devil. Your faith is a universal currency. It is a currency of this kingdom. Every nation has a currency, like we have Naira. The currency of this kingdom where you are is faith. That's why the judge shall live by his own faith. So do everything to develop your faith because that is what you use to quench whatever the devil offers to you that you don't want. Taking the sheet of faith, where we you shall be able to quench all, not some, all, including the one you are going through now, all the fiery dust of the devil. Everything the devil is throwing at you, I command them to be quenched. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And finally, you must enter a covenant to keep serving God. And enter a covenant to keep serving God. That's what will make you to, to sustain your settlement. A covenant to serve God. Seek it for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. A lady graduated from the University of Ibadan. I was posted to Bauchi to serve in NYC. That time they were giving them 7,500. She used the money to paint the church she was serving that time and told God, I entered the God, I want you to paint my life. And God painted her life. Today, a multi billionaire have foundations, training people, even to abroad and all that, helping people. Because she entered the covenant with God. God of heaven will decorate you, God will set to you in every unsettled area of your life, in the name of Jesus. That pain, you will not see it again. That strange movement, you will not see it again. That your current misfortune is ended in the name of Jesus. Whatever power has been sitting on your settlement will command them to be cut off from you. In Jesus' glorious name, rise on your feet this morning. In a short while, we're going to be praying and we're going to be rejoicing and dancing before the Lord, but see... Hear me, only the sheep of God is entitled to his voice. If you are not a sheep, you are not entitled to the voice of the shepherd. My sheep hear my voice, they follow me. Only the sheep is entitled to his voice. So be a sheep of his pasture. Somebody is here, you want to say, Jesus, save me, I want to be born again, I want to be a child of God, All right? I want to be in Christ. Please put your hand on your chest. I know there are sincere people here. And pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody here, you gave your life to Jesus someday. Yes, you did. You did. Sincerely, you did. But you are no more there. You are no more there. You don't have peace. You don't have joy. You can't even feel God. Nothing is going on well. Why not return to him? He will return to you. When the prodigal son returned, he got joy. Somebody is struggling with certain evil habits. You know it. That is what has been keeping you down. Today up, tomorrow down. Why can't you sincerely come to him and say, help me, break this sin, save me? Now, you're among the category of people I've mentioned. Please, please put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer from the depth of your heart sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I return to you. Return to me. Wash me with your precious blood. Write my name now in the book of life. I am born again. I'm a child of God. I'm a member of the household of God. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Sincerely, wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. If you pray that prayer with me, please wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. Somebody pray that prayer sincerely. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you come to church with. Move to the front of the altar now. Please come, 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 come. My lifetime. I will give God my lifetime.